Thank you for tuning into our seller interview series. Up today, we've got a Foresight Amazon Associates business package for sale in multiple niches. Created in January 2016, this business makes $2,588 per month in net profit. And the listing number for this business is 44267. We do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the businesses that they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. How are you doing today, Josh? Really good. I do appreciate you taking the time. It's been a few months since we've talked. I hope that you are, you've been well. Yeah, I've been great. Yeah. So before we get to the questions that I have, I want to go ahead and run through a quick summary of the business. Again, the business was built in January of 2016, has a monthly revenue of $3,012, expenses of $423 to make for a net profit of $2,588, which is generated on a 12-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the four domains, site content and files, and social media profiles for each business, which includes Google+, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, About.me, LinkedIn, and Pinterest for two of the sites, and the other two sites have Facebook and Twitter. Josh, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in this game since 2014, and I've been selling with Empire Flippers probably since, I think around since 2014 also, and it was like just became Empire Flippers and no longer AdSense Flippers back in the day. Yeah, so I have what's been growing into a fairly large business. It's me and I have a U.S. writer and quite a few staff, mostly in the Philippines and India also right now. And we basically build these Amazon sites and we've built some other kinds of sites, but we focus primarily on Amazon affiliate sites. And we build them up. A lot of them don't work for unknown reasons. Some of the reasons we figure out later, some of the reasons we just never know why it ranked, didn't rank. But then sometimes we get these real big hits and we usually, we hold them and we build them up and we try to get them, you know, ranking better for a while. And then eventually we'll sell them on Empire Flippers for somebody who's ready to take them to, you know, the next level or wants to just hold them as an asset because we stay focused really on building these sites Yeah, I think that's the really broad summary of my business and my background. I've sold at least 10 sites with you guys up until now. It's probably actually more than that by now. I don't have the exact number with me, but I've sold quite a few businesses. And, you know, little plug that I have, you know, a lot of the people that have bought businesses for me have written me, you know, five months, six months later or something and said, you know, how happy they are with the purchase. So I have a lot of background and experience with this. I mean, this is, I don't know, the fifth seller interview I've done with Josh in the last, you know, six months. So he makes good businesses. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks. is all I, I wanted it. to say there. So can you talk about how this business makes money? Yeah, absolutely. So there's four sites and actually all four of them are pretty much exactly the same model, just um, in slightly different niches or with different keywords. But basically... The sites, it's really a a super simple model. The sites rank in Google. They have these long review pages that have been written by, you know, high quality. He really does the research to make sure that, you know, we're recommending good products and gives a really clear guide to what somebody should buy. And so they rank for buyer search terms like best, you know, XYZ product or XYZ product reviews. And people come to the site. And they look for what they want to buy. They click to Amazon. And if they buy within 24 hours, then we get a commission of 4 to 8%, depending on the product. And we get a commission on anything they buy from Amazon in those 24 hours. So that's the model. It's really quite simple. We rank it in Google. People come to the site. They look find what they're looking for. They go to Amazon and they make a purchase. And the four businesses you said are not in similar niches. They are diverse niches. Yeah, I mean, I think it's almost silly talking to, about this because whoever's watching, just look, make the deposit and go see what we're talking about. But I'll say that two of them are in essentially the same niche or would go very well together if somebody's not looking to purchase all four of them. Two of them are in pretty much the same niche, and two of them are in 
two pretty different niches, except for that, you know, it's all this kind of product review, consumer information stuff. I mean, if you had a really broad category, you could say they're all in the same niche of consumer information product reviews. But if we get more specific, two of them are in the same niche, more or less, and then two of them are in other niches. Yeah. And so can you talk a little bit about the work that goes into maintaining this whole business package as a whole, you know, on a weekly basis? Yeah. So that's one of the really cool things about a business like this. I do other business projects. In fact, I'm working on a project right now. Part of why I'm selling these sites is to raise money to invest in this new project that I'm working on. And it's a whole community site. There's a big Facebook group and it's a lot of work. It's fun. I'm really excited to be working on it, but it is a lot of work. These sites, pretty much no work. It's really, really passive. You know, Here's what we do. You know, I have my team doing this, but it's really quite simple. And anybody who's buying this, if they don't have a team or something that it's easy to do, we go through these sites every three months and we just make sure, you know, the products that we're recommending are still available on Amazon. They're still, you know, the current models. They're still what we really, you know, ought to be recommending. And we just make sure all the links are working properly. This usually takes 20 minutes or something, maybe an hour. You know, if you're going, I mean, I guess if you're looking for it at all four of these sites, maybe you're looking at two hours to go through that. And maybe you need to like rewrite a little section if there is a product that you decide to change. In all likelihood, you really won't need to change any of these products for a year. None of these products get updated yearly or they don't have like the 2017 model, the 2018 model. Most of these products are, you know, especially the higher end versions that we like to recommend because they cost more. They rarely require much maintenance. So that's something to do like every three months. It's pretty simple. Other than that, you know, over time, you are probably going to want to do some amount of SEO work just to kind of maintain the rankings or to improve them. This isn't something that we need to do with these sites on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis. But I do mention it as something, you know, if you're looking at holding this for two or three years, SEO changes over time and it's something you'd want to probably be aware of over time. Other than that, there's really no like weekly maintenance tasks or even really monthly maintenance tasks. I mean, look at the money you earned, right? <laughs> look at your traffic and look at the money you earned and say, wow, cool. This looks great. You know, that's something I do on a monthly basis when I'm doing all my bookkeeping. You know, this is something I love about these businesses is we put the energy in up front, we get them going, we get them ranking, we get all the product reviews done and everything, and they just make money, you know, a kind of a special type of website to own. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, it's very, very passive. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, exactly. there is not much more, you know, passive that you could have beyond an Amazon Associates business or something like this. Yeah. So what do you think, if someone wanted to come in and grow the business, what are the key opportunities in such a passive business like this? Yeah, great question. So I like to kind of think about this on two different levels. One is like relatively low hanging fruit that would be like fairly easy to just go in and do. And then there's like the second level, which is sort of taking the whole project, the whole business to the next level. So I'll address both of those. The low-hanging fruit is that with any of these sites, there's other products that can be reviewed, and then there's more specific reviews that you can put on. So we kind of strike a balance, but we tend to kind of focus on the bigger keywords in the niches, the ones that are going to make more money. You know, We tend to focus on pages that maybe each page of the site could make you know, a few hundred dollars a month. Now, if you have the, you know, the time and the energy for this or the money to invest in this, you could go ahead and throw in, you know, 20, 30, 40 more reviews even per site here that, you know, getting really specific, like this particular model review keyword, you know, something like that. Or, you know, we tend to focus also on products that are like $100 or more because we want the big commissions from that. But if you threw in, you know, people buy, oh man, 
it's hard to talk about this without getting too specific. Let's use just like an example product. Like let's say this isn't the niche that we're in, but let's say we had a site about dishwashers. So, you know, you might be buying a site that has, you know, best dishwasher reviews type of page. That site's making a lot of money. But people are also, when they go to the Amazon, they end up buying other things as well, dishwasher racks, dishwasher soap. You know, you could throw in pages like, you know, best dishwasher soap reviews. You're not going to make as much money from that as dishwashers because it's just not as expensive of a product. Maybe there's not as many people searching it. But because you already have authority in Google with best dishwashers, it'll be much, much easier to rank for things like best dishwasher soap. And there's still enough people coming from those keywords that you'll relatively easily add to the earnings. And all that stuff adds up. You know, you make a page that you make five pages that make, you know, 50 bucks a month each, and you're making actually $250 a month, and you've increased the value of the business to, you know, 27x that. So your investment is worthwhile. Now, we can kind of look at it from like also like sort of second level stuff, which is any of these sites, they're reviewing products and people are usually, they're in a niche and people are usually interested in other products within that niche. So, you know, this is something that we're doing with this other project that I'm putting all my energy into right now that, you know, that we're doing with that is, you know, creating an email list that's relevant to that niche. And, you know, creating a little like five part email course or something, get people on the email list. And then you can start sending them related offers. And that's really like when you stay on like a small, you know, what I would consider kind of like a smaller Amazon affiliate business to a full on, you know, web business with funnels, sales funnels and all that stuff. Now that obviously that's a much bigger investment, but it's also, you know, obviously also a much bigger payoff. And at least with some of the sites in this foresight package, there's something people are really passionate about. You know, it's not just a dishwasher that everybody needs, but nobody really like cares that much about as long as it doesn't break. Some of the websites in here are um, products that people are quite passionate about and definitely would subscribe to an email list if you wanted to go down that route. If I'm not talking to you too long about this particular point, also say, you know, if I'm looking at buying a business, it comes to my mind, well, if those opportunities exist, why doesn't the seller just do them rather than selling the business? And so I'll just address that. And the reason for me with these sites is honestly just because I have a lot of other projects going on. And for the particular strengths of my businesses, we just have higher leverage opportunities with like building new sites and some of the other projects that we're working on. It's, you know, for our strengths, it's just like higher leverage opportunities. So I'd rather sell these, get them to somebody who wants to really put the energy into them or, you know, wants to hold them. And so I can take that money and focus on where I have the most leverage, which is usually going to be building new versions of these sites because we have a whole system for it. Or also working on these other projects like this site that I've been referring to that all my energy is going into right now. Yeah. And I mean, that's certainly fair. As you've mentioned, you create and sell a lot of businesses. So clearly... I mean, that's kind of your goal with these. And also you want to clear something off your plate to be able to focus on the other things that you're really passionate about. And, you know, just to go back into these businesses a little bit. I mean, there is something to be said about a product, a business, a website that is developed around a community. There is something to be said about the strength in community building and just growing that and developing that could be a key opportunity for something like this. Yeah, that could be a really big win if somebody has the time and energy to make that happen. That would be really taking it to the next level. That would be a really big win. Yeah. So what do you feel are some of the big risks associated with this whole business package? Yeah, great question. So, you know, this is something that comes with this really quite simple business model and extremely passive business model is that it's heavily reliant on Google and on Amazon. So... If we take the Amazon side, you know, Amazon, they have a huge affiliate program. They've made changes to it, I believe, about a year ago in terms of the amount of commission that people get for different products. And, you know, some sites did just fine with that, but other sites, you know, took a bit of a hit with that. I don't think, you know, I'm still holding lots of my other Amazon affiliate websites like this. 
So I don't think that there's really that much risk in terms of Amazon like shutting down their program. I mean, they just redesigned their whole affiliate portal. I don't think that they're going anywhere, but there is a risk, you know, in terms of them, you know, maybe changing the terms or something like that. I don't see that as a really high risk, but it's, you know, something to keep in mind. And then on the Google side, you know, Google's always changing their algorithm. And it seems like in the past, you know, six months or so, they've been just tweaking it. It hasn't even been so much about big updates. They've just been tweaking it all the time. So for the most part, you know, the way I've done the SEO for these businesses, I really think that it's set up to be pretty long term. You know, I don't do any of the tactics that are like, you know, churn and burn kind of stuff that are like, okay, it'll rank well for a year. And then maybe Google will start realizing that those links are really crappy. We can go into that more at some point or also like I'm happy to talk about that with anybody on a buyer seller call. But, you know, I mean, Google's always a risk. I mean, it's when you think about it, I mean, I think with pretty much any online business, a good portion of the traffic is going to be coming from Google. And no matter what kind of SEO you're doing, or you don't even know that you're doing SEO at all, you're not even doing anything intentionally, Google could change their algorithm and some sites go up and some sites go down. So, you know, you could be holding the sites that are going up and you're like, wow, this is great. And you just got a free, you know, without even touching it, you just get a free win. But at the same time, you know, you happen to be on the side of the sites that go down and you just inherited a loss without you even doing anything. So that always presents a risk in this type of business. I mean, I've been doing this for four years and, you know, there's changes in sites go up and sites go down. And overall, I still am making a lot of money from it. So I don't feel like that's like a huge risk. And especially, I mean, this is a cool thing about our site package. You buy a four site package and some of the sites go down and some of the sites go up and you end up, you know, maybe you're still making the same amount of money in the end. But of course, that's the other, I think the other major risk of this business is that you're very much at the whim of something like Google. Yeah. And you have the PBN set up for this business, correct? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what a PBN is and then how that could present a possible risk? Yeah. So for anybody who's not super familiar with this term, PBN stands for Private Blog Network. And the rough idea is that Google values links going to your site from other sites. And they want to see that it's like, you know, random, essentially random, independent, you know, websites and blogs and news sites and whatever linking to your site. And when they see all that stuff, they say like, okay, wow, your site's great. We're going to rank it for more terms. And so a private blog network is... A sort of a way to manipulate that in Google. So we create, this is sort of the standard way of doing private blog networks, is that you create a bunch of websites. And there's a number of things that we do to like make sure they look independent to Google. And then we send links from all those websites pointing to our site. And if we've done it right, Google will think like, oh, wow, there's a lot of websites linking to this site to this, I'll call it a money site, the site that's making money for you, and they'll rank the money site well. So that's a rough outline. I have a system that I've honed over the past few years in terms of, you know, how we choose domains for this, how we do all kinds of different spam checking, how we set them up to make sure that they're, you know, really legit. I have Matt Diggity, who's like kind of, I think, known in these SEO communities as like the king of PBNs. He does a lot of testing. He has a lot of sort of inside information. He's connected with a lot of the other people who use PBNs. So there's sort of a a combined wealth of knowledge around PBNs. So I have Matt Diggity as an official advisor for my business. I pay him from the revenue of the business to advise me on you know, the newest techniques and everything that needs to be done with the PBNs. So I feel like we have like one of the strongest PBN setups. One other thing that I'll say about this is that a lot of times you hear the terms PBNs, you hear about PBNs, and you hear about people buying PBN links. And I think it's important to kind of make a distinction here because when you talk about PBN, usually it's supposed kind of supposed to stand for private blog network. But a lot of people are saying like, oh, well, here's a private blog network, and then they're selling links on their private blog network. So it's not very private anymore. It's really become like a more like a public blog network. And there's been plenty of times in the past that Google's done, you know, big 
you know, gotten some headlines in the SEO world about, you know, people who are using PBNs got a big penalty, something like that. And the thing is, most of the time when they've done these big, you know, big takedowns and stuff like that, it's actually been public blog networks. And it's actually been that they've started, you know, infiltrating these public blog networks that have gotten too big and taken down, you know, links from them and started devaluing them somehow, or even, you know, given penalties to the sites that have gotten links from them. So the clarification that I want to make here is everything we do is on actually private blog networks. So we only link to our own sites and to like authority sites on these blog networks. We're not selling any links on the blog networks. So we don't really have any way, you know, through any advertising or anything like that, we don't have any way for Google to see, you know, that we're a big blog network or something like that. And I think that's an important distinction to make in this case. Yeah, and thank you for going into what, you know, all the risks and stuff involved and what you have done to help minimize that risk. Can you just explain what will happen with the PBN setup during the transition period from you to the new buyer? Uh, Yeah, so I'll keep the PBN and all the links that are currently on the PBN are like 100% guaranteed. Most of the sites, or, or at least many of the sites are linking exclusively, many of the PBN sites are linking exclusively to that money site. But based on the way that I've set up the PBN and how I have it structured, it doesn't really make sense to transfer any of those PBN sites over to the owner. So I'll keep the PBN and actually all the PBN fees are already included in the P&L. So you're going to pay me on a monthly basis to maintain those links. And you're essentially getting a discount on the initial price to pay for those links. So I hope that makes sense. And as the, if you're a buyer listening to this, feel free to, you know, think through that or send a message if I am happy to like explain that further, but you're basically getting an upfront discount and then over, you know, and then you're just paying a monthly fee to maintain those links. And of course those are totally optional, but let me tell you, you are going to want to just keep them because that's, you know, a lot of the power then the reason that these sites are ranking in Google is because of those PBN links. Yeah, I feel like that makes sense. So Josh, would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah, of course. And how much support are you willing to offer a buyer during the transition period? You know, I know that with the PBN and everything, there's a lot of information to take in. You know, how helpful will you and your team be in getting a new owner set up? Yeah, you just broke up for a second. So I'm not sure I heard everything, but I think I can go into it. It's actually because it's just a simple fee, like there isn't really any complication with the PBN. It's like all it's going to be is like, Links stay up, you know, set up the PayPal fee and you're good to go. It'll actually be really quite simple. I actually don't think, you know, there's not really a lot of moving parts to the business. So I don't think that that it's likely that a buyer will need really that much help getting started with it. But with that said, we'll do, I forget what's even listed on the listing, but I'm happy to, you know, we'll do like 30 days email support, any questions that you have, feel free to ask me. And I'm happy to also jump on a call after the purchase of the business and answer any questions or talk about, you know, answer questions about ways to move forward and stuff, ways to keep growing and building. As a long-term seller and somebody who's, you know, going to sell lots more sites with Empire Flippers, it's really in my interest for buyers to be really successful with these sites. And, you know, I, I want them to be, you know, making good money with the sites and saying, well, geez, I would love to buy more sites from Josh and, you know, flip them or, you know, hold on to them for two years and make my money back really quickly and or whatever seems exciting to the buyer. I really want that for the buyer as well. Are you open to discuss something like an earnout? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to discuss that. Awesome. Josh, thank you for the time. I have one final question for you, and I believe you know what it is. But before we get to it, I want to go ahead and run through a quick summary of the business again. So the business was built in January of 2016, has a monthly revenue of $3,012, expenses of $423 to make for a net profit of $2,588, which was generated on a 12-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the four domains, site content and files, and social media profiles. Josh, can you just kind of summarize what we've spoken about today? And, you know, in 30 seconds, give me your best pitch on why this is a business worth buying. Yeah, Absolutely. So basically what we've talked about is we have, you're going to get these four sites. They're super duper passive. You barely have to do anything if you just earn 
with a PBN link set up and all that stuff, you really like you don't have almost anything that that you'll need to do to just keep those earnings going. And so I think you'll probably see on the listing page there that there was a penalty, there was a Google penalty in October, kind of the end of September, October that, you know, for these sites. And I just wanted to address that real quick for anybody who's wondering about that or is concerned about that. So we got a link penalty for these sites. And I don't know for sure why a number of my sites got a link penalty. And I've heard of a lot of other people's sites, you know, this fall, a lot of people's sites got link penalties. What was interesting is that even people who were using a lot of what would kind of typically be considered white hat link building methods were also getting these same link penalties. I don't totally know why, but here's the good news. We were able to get the penalty. We were able to recover from the penalty in just a a few weeks of, and really just like a clear disavow file. And most of actually what we disavowed was kind of crappy links that has been auto-generated by, we didn't even do the link building for. So if that's a concern, I'm of course happy to talk about it more with people, but I think that it should be pretty clear that if anybody's wondering what that dip in October was, that was basically the month that we had the penalty. And so the earnings were much lower for a few weeks there. But the earnings are back on track. We haven't had any issues since then. And I think the cool things right now, if somebody's looking at, at the sort of valuation and the value of the business right now, you know, because of a 12-month valuation and, you know, 12 months ago, the earnings weren't nearly as strong as they are now. And then there is this dip in October and kind of to some extent in November also for some of the sites, you're getting it at a decent discount off of an actual 27x valuation on the current earnings, you know, what the buyer expect to earn monthly as soon as the possession. So yeah, I think that that actually kind of transitions into my 30 second pitch, which is basically, you know, the way I see it here, you have the opportunity to get a pretty much completely passive asset for not much more than two years of its earnings. And, you know, it does have like pretty, you know, a decent amount higher risk than say buying a public company, but you're also getting at least, you know, 50% return on investment or almost 50% return on investment from that based on doing pretty much no work to continue building it. And then on top of that, you know, as I just mentioned, because of the 12-month valuation and because of the earning dip in October, you're looking at a bit cheaper valuation than, you know, you could probably get on the business if you just held it for another 6 to 12 months and sold it. So I think there's a lot of reasons to look into this to, you know, make a deposit and feel free to schedule a seller call with me. I'm happy to talk to anybody personally about their specific concerns. I'm also open to breaking up the package and selling any of the sites individually. So if anybody's just interested in buying, you know, maybe they want like a really super starter site and they want to go with one of the cheapest ones, or they maybe they're not ready to go for, they want one of the, you know, more expensive ones, but they're just not ready to deal with all four sites at once. We can definitely make something work with that. So yeah, that's about all I have to say. (laughs) Well, thank you. And that was definitely something worth mentioning. I took note of it, but then I I got here and I, I didn't, mention it, I guess one good thing worth noting about the dip in October is that you look at the last few months, it rose right back up. And actually December and now in January are higher than it was before the dip. So clearly, you know, whatever issue you had with, you know, your rankings and everything got sorted out and fixed. And now, you know, it's good as ever. Yeah, exactly. And as you've mentioned, it's this is as passive of a business as you know you could want. So if you listening to this are looking for something that you can come in and just kind of sit on and continue to make money, I mean, here you go. It's right up here on a silver platter for you. Josh, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. All right. Thank you so much, too. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information, the link will be below the video that will take you to this marketplace listing. If you're watching this on the listing site and want more information, become a depositor today. When you make the deposit, one of our business advisors will be in contact with you, and you will be given everything you need to review this business. Have a great day.